Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Nick Janes. I'm Josh Ashcroft. And welcome to the show. We don't know what the show is called yet, so we'll just call it The Show. Uh, in this show, whatever it's called, we're going to talk about trucks and cars and, you know, vehicle stuff. Uh, to that point, we're going to kick it right off into our first topic, the Ineos Grenadier, which Josh, I thought was called the Grenadier for a long time. I thought it was a Grenadier. <laughs> maybe, it? It, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe they're saying it wrong. But um, it, it's interesting because so Josh and I just drew, test drove this thing on Monday of this week. Uh, Josh had been a bigger advocate of it for a long time, and I was a, a critic. I've come around. But uh, Josh, why don't you kind of tell us, you know, why you like it, and you know, uh, you know, what what's your appeal? Yeah. yeah, I think we should also get back to your criticisms of it because sure. some of those are still possibly valid. valid. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, what if, I mean, so I have a Defender. I have a, an older, an '86 Defender, and so for me, you know, this was like the perfect car. This was like the new version of it. It's the Defender that we all wanted. The new Defender we all wanted. Uh, solid axles, coil sprung, uh, very utilitarian by modern car standards, and it comes equipped from the factory or can be equipped, you know, with uh, locking discs front and rear, um, the electrical panels pre-wired with switches that are going to uh, auxiliary power ports all over the truck. Um, those are so sort of seem like little things, but you know we're building out all these trucks all the time, and it's, it's just such a hassle, and you're having to drill holes, and it's it's never the same or as good as if the factory had installed it. Right. So it's just really nice having all that winch, bumper, all that, and the reality of the finances of it, you can you can wrap it all into the financing. You can get a, a I think it's a, a rhino rack roof rack from the factory. Um, so just on and on and on, you can just, it just checks all the boxes. So it looks kind of expensive at first, and it, and it is, but the value of having all that stuff in there, I mean, all of our trucks, we spend probably 20 grand on top of the truck, just getting them outfitted every time, you know? And so, this is coming with all of those things from the get-go, and that's, I think that's one of the biggest things for me. Right, <clears throat> and you're, I'll tell you, I mean, I disagreed with you at first, and then I really had to come around. Usually Josh is, uh, I just told uh, our one of our clients, Firestone Tire, that Josh is usually two or three steps ahead of me all the time on this sort of stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll admit it. But, you know, at first, because it starts at 74 and change, uh, and you in the UK it's a little cheaper because you did a little more utilitarian version as you do with a new Defender. To me, that felt crazy. That felt like a lot, especially given the interior, it's not plush, right? It's not like a BMW X7. And so I'm like, oh my God, like why is it so much money? You can get a, uh, a twin-locked Wrangler Rubicon for 57. So like, wait, this is 15 grand more? How? Well, to Josh's point, once you get, you know, Rhino Rack, you know, all, I mean, again, the, the capability of this truck out of the gate is insane. You know, you get a snorkel, you get lockers, you get the, the uh, auxiliary battery. You know, it's plumb for the fridge in the back. It's plumb for lights. It's, you know, got wade mode. It's, you know, it's we saw on the screen. We'll put a little video up real quick. You can see the temperature tire. Like it gives you more information and does more things out of the box than anything else. And and it really came home for me when I added up how much I spent last year on my third gen Tundra. I get industry discounts and things like that, um, but parts and labor with the truck purchased and with a tray and canopy on the, not canopy, just tray on the back, I was in 110 grand. 110 grand, I doubled the price of the truck. Yeah, labor's a good point. Like, yeah. it's easy to check the boxes on the parts, but if you're having to pay anybody to do any of that work, that's just like that's huge. Right. Yeah. I mean, I bought my Ranger for thirty nine grand, and then put twelve grand of like parts and labor on it, and that didn't finish the build. Mm -hmm. Right. And I got a lot of those parts for free. Right. You know. So the thing, like again, drilling for uh, a snorkel that's not factory. You know, like you know, again, let's look. I think a good example, and one I'm sharing with friends, and um, actually Ron um, from Campioshi called me, mm -hmm. and we talked about it, and he sees the value too. He's got a. Um, an 80 series. Let's say you're going to go buy the all new Land Cruiser, right. right? Smaller interior, no front locker, you know, uh, two inches fewer ground clearance from the factory. You know, you go down the list, no roof rack, um, cloth interior. You're going to do all that stuff. You're going to be, you're going to double the price of that truck again. And then you're less than a Grenadier with more horsepower, you know, better styling, you know, front locker, you know, all these sort of things. So, um, but how was it? So, okay, I, you proved yourself right. 
with the value proposition, how did it drive? What'd you think? I, yeah, I really, I really liked it. And I will, I will say, you know, the whole time I was driving, I was like, oh, because I'm comparing it one to like the 80 and my uh, Defender, the other solid axle trucks, right? It drove great. It drove like as good as you could sort of hope a solid axle vehicle would drive. Um, having said that, you know, the, the LR3 is probably a, a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer, a little more comfortable because it's independent suspension all around, air suspension. But I really like driving it overall. Uh, it, it did have the, the, the um, um, sales rep even mentioned this. You, you kind of have to steer out of it. And I don't know if, if you give it a bit of a lift, it's going to give it enough more caster that that would go away. But um, but yeah, going around corners, it definitely kind of held its line. You had to steer out a little bit. Because that is the ball bearing steering, right? Yeah, so it's 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 um, it's not a rack and pinion. It's it's the old, old school, you know, uh, steering racks like you got on, on all the solid axle trucks. Um, underneath, also everything looked really good. It looked really substantial and well protected, yeah, well designed. Heck. Beefy, everything super beefy. Um, yeah, I really like driving it. The ergonomics on is the other thing. It's very 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 similar to an old Defender but better like it, it's you've got to you fit in there I like i'm i'm six foot i'm kind of hunched over in my defender even and to see you have to do that you don't even really fit uh zach didn't fit at all zach deal uh, yeah. yeah he was just it was like ridiculous. it was kind of funny he, like he can't even work the pedals the steering wheel um you fit in that in, yeah. in that yeah. thing no problem you've still got good visibility i was really comfortable like the the height of the window and the the door um panel was thick enough that you get like an armrest out of it yeah so it was it was great um the switches on the ceiling like the slope of the ceiling was such that it was a little hard to, to see actually it. see those so i'm like what is this i don't know you, you, you get used to all that um but driving is really great the, the power was great the transmission was great that was another point because i was a little mad when it came out with a beamer powertrain i said it should have been a ford eco boost and then you made the point and i echoed it where on the test drive it's sort of like that Beamer inline six is sort of like the Chevy 350 of Europe. Yeah. It's like, and that's true. And there's Beamer shops, I mean, and dealers around the country. So even if you did break down in Wyoming, you're probably not that far yeah. from a Beamer power plant, you know, part. And that motor has apparently proven to be, you know, I did a little research on that because, you know, I, I'm a bit of a BMW fan. I've, I've had a couple of them. I love the straight sixes. You still own one, but I'm not going to, uh, you know, apologize for their, uh, the, the breaking down that they they haven't been known to be the most reliable motors as of late like that's true mm. and but that particular model of motor has apparently been a, a pretty good one yeah so that's good it's got a really great transmission that's in like everything yeah um so it's good but i, I will say the ecoboost has also been really good yeah you know and i think that's the other comparison on the value proposition is the bronco mm. um the ecoboost the 10 speed right it's like it's such a great truck and that's when you're going well is this worth 20 grand more out of the box, you know? Um, but it, it's a little bit bigger inside, which is nice, mm -hmm. you know? Like, mm -hmm. if you need that space, the Bronco doesn't have it. Yeah. Um, the no, I mean, let's, let's put it, because I've got a pretty built up Bronco, uh, four door uh, Black Diamond. And I'm at, I got, I got the rack for free, the skid plates for free, the bumper for free. Uh, you, how do you get all this stuff for free, man? You just gotta be, you gotta be old Nikki JJ. <laughs> but anyway, so like, let's say I got 12 grand worth of stuff for free on that truck, if not more, and I'm still 70 Gs into that with the price of the vehicle. Yeah. And the truck was 49, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if someone were really building my truck, you'd be at Grenadier prices. Yeah, and you haven't like done anything that crazy your truck. It's no. a pretty normal It's an OMB, build. you know, two inch lift, it's 35s, it's a roof rack, you know, the rooftop tent, you know, it's a couple lights, you know. 1552 wheels. 1552 wheels, yes, thank you. The bumper winch, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the normal stuff. Yeah, normal, yeah, and like, okay, I mean, I got the goose gear in the back with the fridge, but I mean, like, if you're really trying to try to spend time in the truck. Yeah, everybody's doing that. You know, you need it. and. And then, you know, almost no room inside, you know, the thing is loud as hell on the highway, you know, because of the not fixed roof, but yep. it's now officially a fixed roof because I've covered it in rack and rooftop tent. No, I mean, like, for another four grand, you could have Grenadier? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it felt really nice. It was quiet. It was solid. Like, everything felt really well built. Like, we went around, we just like, playing with all the panels and trying everything out, and it, it, it felt good. Like, some people have kind of complained about the interior because I, I think they're comparing it to like a, a you know a g63 or something you know and it it's not what it is or even just a, a five series bmw or like an x5 but um i actually really like the interior it's 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 much more utilitarian but everything felt high quality and well built and um well it's it's the g-wagon 
or I mean, it is truly because it's supposed to be kind of like G wagon and Defender together. Right, right. It is the G wagon I want now. Right, right. And we were talking about this earlier. Uh, Ezra Dyer of Road and Track, um, he did the review of the new G five fifty Professional, and I'm like, oh, cool. Like I clicked on that. I'm like, oh man, if I don't get a Grenadier, maybe I'll get that. And I clicked on just zoomed to the bottom just to see what the price was, because you go to the Mercedes website, it's hard to find anyway. So it's kind of a rare trim. Uh, Professional, G550 Professional starts at $166,000, as tested was $188,000. It's cuckoo bananas, but so if you're comparing to that interior, or like a Range Rover or something, yeah, like, yeah it's not a good interior, but like for what you and I want, yeah. you can hose it out, you know what I mean, you can get it with cloth or, you know, rubber floors. It's in incredible. So yeah, I mean, it's not going to be um, an Escalade competitor, you know, you're not going to have soccer moms want to drive this truck. It really is the Defender that we wished... Yeah. Land Rover had made. Yeah, it's it's a it's all of these things are built around the enthusiasts who are actually going to want to use these things off road. Uh, if you're not going off road, there's no point in having these solid axles. There's no point in having the interior that you can wash out like that um, and pre wired for all this power stuff. You know, like those are things you're paying for. The the other one that I do like is, is the Recaros. Mm. Um, I, re I remember uh, you know Andrew St Pierre was kind of like dogging on putting those in there. I thought that's actually a really great. Uh, or sorry, Andrew St. Pierre White is his name. The, the, um, I thought that was a really great addition to it because you're spending a lot of time in these. If these are people that are actually using this, one of the things that we've all complained, like the seats in the stock Defender, the original Defender, terrible. Mm, uh, 70 70 series Land Cruisers, terrible, right? These are these utilitarian work trucks, and so then you have to go and spend a whole bunch of money on aftermarket seats, and in modern cars, that's actually really hard to do. You've got airbags and sensors and occupancy sensors, and it's so hard to put aftermarket seats in. Um, and, and as we were saying, I think it, it, for a company like Ineos, it's actually probably less money to put a quality seat like that mm. in from a manufacturer than to gear up and make their own cheap seat. Oh yeah. And so oh, yeah. It, it just makes so much sense. I thought that was a really, really, really great. Um, and it's funny that that guy whose name I'm not going to try to repeat was balking at like, don't spend my money on that. Yeah. But then I was talking to Ron from Camp Yoshi. He's like, wait, Ricars from the factory for that price? He's like, totally. oh my God. Like, yeah, no, it's a slam dunk. Like, yeah, I, I know in, when I was a journalist years ago, I met the team at Volvo who designed all their, just the seats. The engineers were like six engineers yeah. for just the seats. So yeah, Ineos, is, it doesn't make any sense to, you know, team up like that or try to either phone it in with one guy or not at all. Just go get the correct seats for God's sake. They're done. They've yeah. designed them. They're great. And, right. and they are really good. And it's, I, I felt like it was, I, I'm not, I'm kind of a wider person and heavier person and don't fit into some of the really um, like sporty Recaras. Mm -hmm. And and so these were, they were really comfortable. They were great. I could definitely drive in those seats all day. They didn't have a lumbar adjustment in that one. Is that right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. I don't, and that was a cloth trim. Okay. So I don't know if they set that. up to leather if it adds it or not, yeah. but it, that was one negative because I do have a bad back, but it was enough of a, it was already there. It wasn't just like yeah. Toyota ones will like push your spine through your stomach. They're that strong, so they didn't. It, but anyway, didn't do that. Yeah, not not too bad. Um, yeah, it's but it is it is nice. For finally, frankly, that someone's building it. I, I will say when <laughs> we'll talk about the T case. Yeah. So on my test drive, I wanted to test uh, high and well, it was always in four wheel high, right? So I wanted to test four low. And uh, he said, like, nobody else, you know, the test driver guys had ever tried that. I was like, well, that's telling. And the dealer had neither. None yeah, the dealer. Matters. No one. I was the first person in that truck to tie, try the T case. Went into low fine, which is great. Um, and it's an electronic shifter, the Beamer shifter, right? So it's like you push the top for, you know, park and you do up one for reverse and then you have to up one again for like neutral and then down for drive. Anywho, go to neutral go back to up to high and it starts grinding and I'm like oh god I'm like I'm back and it's grinding and I'm going up and it's grinding I couldn't find the sweet spot and we just I let go and it was like in the middle and it was like so we just turned the vehicle off I've got it all the way into high turned it back on it was totally fine but as you discovered it there is no neutral in the T case my question is, why the hell would they buy a T-case that doesn't have effing neutral? I mean, like this truck, full-time full -time, four-wheel drive, an amazing T-case, easy to operate with neutral. Yeah, and I, and I think we're used to that. Right. So you get, I don't want to say you're timid about it, but you kind of like, you move it into neutral. Yeah. Then you kind of wait for things to settle down, move it into gear. Yeah. And, and apparently this doesn't have that. Right. The way you put it into neutral, you have to climb under the truck and turn a screw in. So it's purely for towing. Like if you need to flat tow it or something, mm. you can do it, but I, I don't understand why it's not on the shifter. Like maybe there's some good reason in the design, but yeah, you have to just go from high to low, low to high, 
and I also don't understand why it was spinning because you were in neutral. neutral. So right. it, it, that's disconnecting the transmission. I right. suppose it could be coming in. The engine's still spinning. It's yeah. hitting the torque converter. Maybe the torque converter's spinning a little bit. I, I don't mm. know. But it was like you could not get it in. And anyway, we read that it's a little bit tough. It becomes muscle memory. You, you must just have to do it in sort of like yeah. one fluid motion or something. Right, and right. You get used to it. But in any case, it was a hang up and none of, we were all like, ah, we don't want to break this brand new <laughs> truck here. And, yeah, it was, it was uh, a little... Uh, the dude wasn't mad, the test guy, but like I was like, <laughs> you know, and I, that said, I mean, my, my Gladiator did grind too. I mean, in. it was never, if you were stopped or you're going three miles an hour, it, still, it would still sometimes, you know, so mm -hmm. whatever. Maybe like, that's what it does. It's yeah. just, yeah, I mean, it was a shock because, I mean, this one is like butter. I've never yeah, had no, any, yeah, this one rocks. Yeah, this one's so rocks. good, you're right. That so is, I, was, I assumed... This is, this is an 80 series Land Cruiser, by the way. Right, yeah, a 92 FJ80. Uh, I just assumed since they did, they were so deliberate on building everything for being yeah. the best off-road that it would have an easy-to-use, brilliant T case. Do we know who's the manufacturer It's a ZF, I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, yeah, oh okay, I looked also. It up and it was, hmm. I'm pretty sure that was ZF. And the, the other interesting one is a lot of those... Specs aren't fully published, so we don't know. Right. But we see who some of the suppliers are, and so I think the different the locking diffs are Eaton E lockers, I believe. Oh, which I um, have in the rear of this. Yeah. And then I can't remember who makes the axles, but it's all like top tier, top shelf suppliers on everything. And yeah. like that's another brilliant thing they did. It was just like somebody makes lockers, why reinvent the wheel? Let's just go get those. Right. Somebody makes a great transmission and transfer case, let's just go get those. And um, so yeah, I'm not sure what else that transfer case is in because mm. the transmission is in like everything. Right. Um, but but a lot of them are two wheel drives that it's in. You know, it's a lot of the mm -hmm. BMWs and uh, yeah, the ZF. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And they make great stuff. ZF does. You know. So it's yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one I I you know other than Borg Warner and those are the two you know gold standards. So it'd be interesting. Anyway. So I mean, I've got a speculative order in, which took nothing to get. You know what I mean? Like, there's like, do you want an order? I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And yet I paid and didn't get an order. That's, that's another interesting one. <laughs> long story. So that's so funny. So uh, maybe it's your story. You can tell it. Yeah. But, you know, when, when you first, when it first, because they released it, and then it was like, eventually you can open it up. You can get order banks. And then if you're serious, you can give us $450. And you did that. So, yeah, I, I registered it like a year and a half ago. Paid 450 bucks to lock in my spot. And then the time came around of like, okay, you have to decide if you're going to place an order or not, apparently. And, and I, cause I already built one out in there. I have two in there built out, but it didn't like automatically translate into a real order. I wasn't sure what you're going to have to do to do that. And I just, I didn't really do anything. You went and placed an order. Didn't After have to put many, money. many months later, yes, year later, place the order. It's a real order. It's in there. And then, but mine is not. Yeah. And so I need to go do something. And I think I the dealer thought, and that was what's confusing. He was like, oh, for the $450 you put down for your order. Because I had two orders in the system. I didn't realize they were orders. Yeah. I thought I was just like building, building like, I thought it was saving it to my account. But apparently it's like placed order. And then I said, well, what does it take? What, how much money do I have to put down to make this an order? He's like, oh, no, it's an order for the $450 that you put down for each of these <laughs> orders. I didn't tell him this, but he's like, but I'm like, I didn't put any money down for either of those orders. And you have two trucks order, basically. Yeah, but then he told me, oh, well, we already took one of your orders and moved it to dealer stock. Just like... So automatically, like, why would so do I that? get my four hundred fifty dollars back, <laughs> which I didn't spend? <laughs> you should try and get it back. I should. I should. <laughs> <laughs> a little down payment on that hundred or ninety-seven. Not so here. I mean, yeah. All right, let's step back and let's be a little honest. Yeah, you can get one for seventy-four, but when the one you really, 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 really want, or at least for me, with two-tone paint, you know, the the special snorkel air cleaner, like the full length rack, lockers, leather, you know, it's seven ninety-seven and two hundred. Yeah, mine was easily that much. I don't remember what it is. It was well into the nineties, because also for me at that point, you're like, e even if you said, okay, what's the bare minimum that I need? Yeah. You're gonna be eighty-five. Yeah. You know, easily, right? So then you're like, it's eighty-five, but I didn't get yeah. like the few other things that I really, really, really want. Spend, I'm, I'm gonna spend the extra ten grand and get like the car I really want. Once I'm spending that much, because you know you're gonna it. go there anyway. So why yeah. do it aftermarket? Totally. Do it with them do from the all. factory. Get it all. Get all the little options. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would I would probably get the little safari roof window things yeah, even yeah. with the roof. I just I love having the sunroofs and Fair. having that option and yeah. who knows. But anyway, yeah, it's 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 a lot of money. It, it is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, They're offering their own financing, which is good because I don't know if USAA is gonna <laughs> super duper want to loan me a hundred thousand dollars for a truck. So if any of us does, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, because I think they don't usually care if you can actually afford it. They just want you to buy a car. So most dealers, right? Isn't well, not the, it's the, I mean, I don't think it's the Tonkin, but it's going to be Ineos itself. No, oh, oh, it's Ineos. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So, not through the dealer. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which, is, which is good. Because they want to move 
trucks. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure the interest well, rate's going to be fine. Well, and that's the way to do it. Like GM did that too, right? They made more money off of loans than selling cars. Yeah, like, right. That's Because you're making $1,000 off the car or 4000 off the life of the loan. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. It'll be good. It'll be interesting. So more more coming on that. But we also wanted to talk about another vehicle, you know, as you as we start punching the numbers, right? You know, I'll step back for a second. We've built, you know, what, seven vehicles between the two of us or more over the, of the years and, uh, well, even just the last couple of years. Yeah. I, I recently got a 2019 Bison. And after having dealt with some of my other vehicles with a, that are loaded up with aftermarket parts, I'm getting a little tired of it because nothing works together really correctly. Everything's a little freaking weird. But with the Bison, like, you know, a piggyback or, you know, piggyback, shocks from the factory, boron steel skid plates from the factory, uh, snorkel from the dealer, but you know, designed by AEV. You know, all the sort of things you kind of, I would do to a truck anyway, came with the truck and guess what? It works amazing, you know? Nothing, nothing, no fucking problems. So that said, you've been thinking about the new bison. Yeah, and I think th- to sort of tag onto that, the boron steel skid plates and bumpers, right? Those are, lighter than any comparable aftermarket bumper is going to be. And when you look at the payload on the Bison, it's reduced from the standard uh, Colorado because it has all that other aftermarket stuff on there and that's being accounted for in it. So when you're looking at another truck, like you have to account for that. It looks like a 400 pound difference between it and the Ranger and really it's like 120 pound payload difference when you take into account the actual weight of putting those comparable products on, you know? Mm. So I think that's, that's really huge. Uh, like you said, yeah, it kind of comes with everything. And then the new Bison, like I was really, I like the Bison. I, I, I also like, you know, these more fun, classic, quirky trucks. And there's just not a lot of trucks that I really want. The Grenadier is probably one of them. One of the things I'm struggling with with that is um, I have a, a, a Defender 110, an LR3, a D1. They're all SUVs. This is like a, another SUV. And the LR3 is so good. I'm going to pay 90 grand for a truck that doesn't drive as good on the road but it's really cool and classic. It's like marrying my LR3 and the Defender, and that's great, but Mm -hmm. do I need that, you know, versus something that's really different, like a pickup. I would really love having a pickup, and I would really love having, like, a wedge-style, lightweight camper on the back. Um, And so so having something that's different. So the new new Colorado, 35s, lockers. Bison, yeah. Sorry, yes, Bison. Um, And the the price on it is not released yet, but looking at the old ones, uh, it's going to be a lot cheaper than... A grenadier mm-hmm. and then driving your truck too that was the other thing we took out my defender or my defender my lr3 and your bison a couple yeah, or yeah. last weekend i guess yep, it was yep. and traded trucks for a little bit and it, it was really interesting how like the 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 bison definitely sort of feels more truck-like and not in a bad way you know i'm sure this new one i've been told that because i've not driven the new one but i've been told that it feels much more like a bronco mm-hmm. in terms of nimbleness because mm-hmm. that one feels old truck and heavy yeah which is has its own charms yeah i like a truck that feels like a truck but then the bison i mean the bronco and the light um, the ranger feel lighter on their feet which mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. kind of nice like you don't feel as fatigued living mm-hmm. with it but anyway right so i've been told new colorado drives like um, bronco in terms of its you know nimbleness mm-hmm. so that's that's those are good things. Yes, and, and, and I've been is. reading rave reviews. Everybody that's driving it. I mean, automotive journalists are invited to these events, hopefully with the idea that they're going to speak well of it. But yeah. there's just been like the, the no real criticism, like that that would scare me about the truck at all. Everybody's been raving about how good it is. So wow. um, yeah, 35 from the factory, and then the way it drives, like you said, the, the you can at least tell what's going. The LR3 is really really good. It just works, but you're a little, everything's sort of numb and disconnected and that's, you just have to trust it. It does it, it totally works. You just, it's so easy and it really helps with the fatigue and, and but it's, it's a little harder to tell what's going on and it's sort of nice like having that sort of feedback and the Bison definitely feels like it talks to you a little more. And um, mm-hmm. the engine's great, but the new Bisons come with a different engine, so. Yeah, um, but it's, it's a known quantity. They've been running it in Silverado for two years more. Yeah, it's got plenty of power. The two seven uh, turbo four, which is a big. That's a big four. That is a big four, yeah. and it's putting out big numbers. It's putting out four hundred and twenty seven pound feet or something. Yeah, it's putting out like LS one numbers, like. Yeah, crazy. It's half the displacement, <laughs> but uh, you know it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's gonna be great and way better fuel mileage. Oh, so yeah. that would yeah. be another nice thing. Um, yeah. Well, I for one support you. I mean, they're probably gonna be sixty two yeah. grand, maybe more. 
I mean, it's so funny. It's amazing how much cheap or more expensive cars and trucks have gotten recently. Because my Bison, brand new, brand new was fifty, and that was like a lot. Yeah. For of Colorado, whoa, you know. And now, so we're like, we're what the AEV edition, first ed- edition for Canyon was like sixty-seven or something, sixty-five. Mm. So yeah, they're a midsize now. Kissing seventy is is wild. It's yeah. wild, but it's gonna be yeah thirty fives. I mean, like again, you just yeah to, to your point, you could put a Super Pacific in the back tonight and yeah. like have a world class expedition rig. Be great. And yeah, that's it. You know, it'd be really nice. It'd be really nice. Not going to do all that work, and then I would really like the benefits of having a pickup and the wedge camper, with just being able to like quickly set up camp and have a heater in there and it's something different too you know it's just like yeah, yeah. otherwise I've, you know it's got more of the same and so having something that i could do longer distance trips like if we're going to be working on the road yeah having an interior space to be able to work and just something that gives right. me a, a different uh sort of um configuration that, that some other benefits yeah so, yeah yeah cool, man. no i like it i like it a lot i need a test drive one then now yeah, well, wait till yeah. Well, hopefully, they'll get one in showroom sometime soon. Yeah. It's it's surprising that it's not out yet, but yeah, and the, the, the pricing's not even out. I, that, that's surprising too. I, I thought that would have been released. Well, with the yeah, with the strikes now at UAW, it might be a minute. <laughs> that's true. Minute. That's true. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of a uh, lot of. That's the benefit right of uh, Grenadier being built by the French. Oh wait, <laughs> the strikiest people on planet of Earth. Hopefully, hopefully they don't go on strike before they build my Grenadier. Uh, you have the colors on the Grenadier, too. Have you picked your color yet? Mm, well, as I was telling you earlier offline, I had picked the Eldoret or whatever, yeah, Eldoret, Eldoret cool blue, blue uh, light blue, and uh, with a white top, um, which is one of the reasons it kicked it up near 100 grand, because it was at like 90, and then with the two-tone paint, it really kicked it up there. But um, I, then I told uh, Bridgestone, our client, that uh, they can pick the color if they want to rent the truck. So I just said, hopefully you guys like the Eldorado Blue. Because, you know, it'll <laughs> pop. It's just distinctive. And, and, like, at first I wanted to do Scottish White, but I didn't want to just copy your your truck. I didn't. I, I feel dickish just getting the newest version of your truck. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. So It's okay. It'll still look good. <laughs> Ah. It'll still look better in the photos. Now. Yeah, it will. <laughs> uh, it will. It probably will. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, it, I mean, I'm not mad about the mushroom. I do want like two tone. Whatever they do, you yeah. know, I want a two tone. I hope they don't do green because I got the green Bronco. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't want to do a dark blue because you get lost in photos. Mm-hmm. Even though I do really like blues, so I think that Eldoret is not like the, a color that anything else mm-hmm. that looks like your truck comes in. Yeah. You know, no G wagons. I don't think. Is there even a comparable Land Rover color? Uh, not that blue, no. Not quite. Yeah, right. there's yeah. some fun colors, but not like that. Yeah, there's the the cockpit green was pretty cool. You know, the, the mm-hmm. old green is kind of a similar sort of pastel-y tone. Mm-hmm. But well, um, no, there was I guess a, a no th- series three had kind of a similar. It, it was in his blue, it was a little more baby blue, right? But mm-hmm. a, wasn't there a light right. blue like could that? Right. It could be right. There have been a lot of colors on the series. I'm less familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with those trucks anyway, for sure. So. But, yeah. All right, I think we'll wrap it up there. Sounds good. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, folks. Thank Thanks you. for watching. If you want to uh, like, subscribe, comment, you know, all the things everyone tells you to do, do those things. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Nick Jaynes.